The fourth lesson in kinematics is about acceleration. The guiding question for this lesson is how is acceleration related to velocity and time? Acceleration is a vector quantity and it's defined as the rate of change of velocity. We can say that acceleration is the change of velocity divided by time. We normally write it like this, A equals delta V over T, where A stands for acceleration, delta V stands for velocity, and T stands for time. I'd like to talk about delta for a moment. I know you've seen it before. I know that you know it means change of, but it's important to, to make sure we know how to calculate it precisely. So when determining the change of a quantity over time, we always subtract the initial value from the final value. In other words, you take the final value minus the initial value. Uh, like this, delta x equals xf minus xi, final minus initial. And when you do that, the sign, whether the answer is positive or negative, um, on your answer will show you whether the quantity increased or decreased. Uh, let's take a look at a couple examples. Money is a great example. We all know about money. So let's say you leave the house one morning with $10 and you come home with $4. Right? I'm sure you can tell what happens, but let's look at it technically. Your delta money would be your final money minus your initial money. So $4 minus $10 is negative $6. So the amount, the amount that your money changed is $6 and it's negative, which means you have less money than you started with. You have six less dollars than you started with. Um, let's take a look at another example, still money. Uh, the next day, you leave the house with those same four dollars, but you come home with nineteen dollars. Right? So your change in money would be your money final minus your money initial, which would be nineteen dollars minus four dollars, and we get positive fifteen. Right? Over the course of the day, you acquired fifteen dollars somehow. Right, you have 15 more dollars than when you started. And so if we carefully do final minus initial, we'll get the sign in addition to the amount. And that's very important for us. All right, let's get back to acceleration. The dragster in the video accelerated from rest, which is 0 meters per second, to 135 meters per second in 5.23 seconds. Let's figure out the magnitude of the dragster's acceleration. Notice again, like we've seen before, I'm asking for the magnitude of the acceleration. We don't care what direction it was accelerating for right now. So we'll start with our equation, as always, A equals delta V over T. And I like to write out sometimes specifically what delta V means, right? It's VF minus VI. And we can substitute in what we know. 135 meters per second minus 0 meters per second, the final minus the initial, divided by 5.23 seconds. You should follow along in your calculator and double check this. I get the acceleration to be 25.8 meters per second per second. Let's talk about these units before we go any further. So we left it as meters per second per second, uh, but you're not always going to see it like that. In fact, you'll rarely see it like that. Um, if you take meters per second and divide it by seconds, we could say that's the same thing as meters per second over seconds over one. You could put anything over one. Uh, and then instead of dividing by a fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal. You might know this as keep change flip, but it's called multiplying by the reciprocal. So m over s times 1 over s. And when we multiply those two fractions across the top, we get m times 1 is m, and s times s is s squared. And so we end up with meters per second squared. The units we'll usually see for acceleration are meters per second squared. But I like meters per second per second because it kind of describes more what happened. So the dragster started off at 0 meters per second, and then each second it gained 25.8 meters per second of velocity. So after one second, it was going 25.8 meters per second. After two seconds, it was going 51.6 meters per second. Um, and you could just keep adding 25.8, um, well, at least five times, and then you know there's a little bit more. Um, let's take a look at another example. A Boeing 737 touches down with a speed of 80 meters per second and comes to a complete stop in 35 seconds. What was the acceleration of the airplane while on the runway? We'll start with the same equation. 
and we'll do delta v like we like we said it's the final value minus the initial and since the airplane was stopping its final velocity is zero minus its initial velocity of 80. and so what we end up with is a negative acceleration uh, we get negative 2.3 meters per second squared so each second the velocity changed by 2.3 meters per second and the negative sign in this case is telling us that the velocity is being reduced by 2.3 meters per second every second from 80 all the way down to zero so in summary acceleration is the rate of change of velocity uh, the equation for this is a equals delta v over t where a is acceleration delta v is change of velocity and t is time